So, if you guys didn't know, last week, well, tech, two weeks ago, by the time this video goes up, I turned 30 years old. My birthday was September 22nd. And of course, when you enter a new phase of life, you start thinking about what did I do in the last phase or what is going to happen in the next phase. And I wanted to just write down a couple of glads, things I'm glad I did not do in my 20s. It's a short list, but it's an important list. I'm so glad I did not experiment with drugs and that's any type of drug. So only time I took any type of drug was Advil if I had a headache and yeah, that's basically it because I'm not a pill popper. I'm not someone who just, I can't. I have friends who have told me their experience when it comes to shrooms or how they feel with weed or how they love different drugs. And I definitely know people who is the type to just try it, you know, just wants to try it just for the sake of it. It never enticed me to try it. The only thing smoke wise that I've done was hookah. And I, with hookah, I stopped like a, a good three to six months after. It wasn't for me, just drugs are not for me. And also I don't want to try a drug and my body actually likes it and craves it often. I'm so scared to get hooked or addicted to anything, period, especially drugs. I'm just not that type of person. I don't want to be that type of person. I don't crave to be. It's not something I look at when I see other people do it and I feel like I'm missing out. I don't have any FOMO when it comes to drugs because I know drug is something super serious. You don't know if you will be addicted to it, you don't know if it's something that your body will react to positively or negatively until you actually do it. So for me, I'd rather not do it. And one thing I do not want to do is be dependent on substance like that. It can definitely spiral really quickly, especially if you think you have a hold on it. A lot of people are not functional drug addicts i don't want to figure out that i'm the type to have that addictive habit so i'm glad i did not start that habit in my 20s i'm glad i didn't use karna klarna klarna or afterpay or any of those other services when it comes to purchasing an item because those things are very predatory it may seem good it may seem harmless when you first are checking out and it's like oh, okay no interest you know just bit, split the payments into four split the payments into how many ever how many payments they have it may seem harmless because it's zero percent interest rate but what companies do is they give you the best incentive coming in so you are used to the service and to a point where you feel as though you cannot make a purchase or a function without the service. So yes, 0% interest rate does sound good when you are purchasing something, but then if you relapse or if you do not pay that in a certain amount of time, then that 0% easily turns into, I heard it's like over 29.99%, more than what your credit card is charging you for, for interest. So uh-uh uh-uh no i'd rather just use my card if my card charges a certain amount of interest i'd rather pay the bank that than go through the the third parties like klarna and afterpay in order to pay so being said that i make sure my bank credit score my not my bank credit score but my credit score is up to par because people who normally goes after Klarna and Afterpay they don't have a really good banking relationship and their credit score probably not as good now there are some people who definitely just want to use it just to use it and are financially responsible and will pay back in time but a lot of people they are going for that instant gratification when it comes to wanting 
and getting something at that moment. So they don't think about the repercussions of maybe not paying on time. Or I heard there are some that you can't even pay early. It has to be on that date. And that's the little type of uh, sneaky tactics that they use because if you are financially responsible and you're like, okay, I want to pay this beforehand and not wait until on the 13th to pay because I might not remember on the 13th or life just happens and I missed the date to pay and now you are charged more than you wanted to all because you could not wait one two or you did not take the time to work on your bank relationship your banking relationship and your financial score fiscal score in order for you to have a good credit score or a good credit card opportunities so yeah i'm always scared of those things and i feel as though especially as an entrepreneur i'm not someone who gets paid every week because that's just not how contracting works you get 30 60 90 days nets so I cannot guarantee I'm going to be able to pay the amount that I use every two weeks or within each week after. I'd rather just pay all up front. I'm like that with just about everything, um, with housing, with insurances. I'm the type of person I just need to pay up front because my funds are just so much everywhere being a freelancer. I just don't want to risk lapsing on any type of payments on anything. So I was, no, I didn't use Klarna. It's not even something that entices me. Doesn't matter what it is, I'm not going to use Klarna. I'd rather have a very healthy bank relationship to have any credit cards I want, to have a high credit card uh, limit, to have good credit score for me to use that. And plus, when you use Karna, you're not getting any points that you normally would with your bank, all the incentives that your bank does give you, you're not getting that with Karna. So I rather just go everything via my bank directly. And also I don't know the terms when it comes to trying to, you know, if, if you get charged for something, if something goes wrong with the transaction, I don't know how that works with Karna in the middle compared to if you go straight directly to your bank. So I just avoid all of those because they just seem like a headache and I get way more benefit using my bank. And plus I have one of the best banks in the States and that is Navy Federal. So you cannot beat Navy Federal's generosity. You cannot beat Navy Federal's interest rates. You cannot. So I rather just stick with them I've always been a member since my dad got into the military, so they have not steered me wrong, and I appreciate them for that, so I definitely don't see myself paying via Afterpay or Klarna in compared to paying with my Navy Federal bank card. I'm glad I did not buy a property in my 20s, and I was this close to purchasing Um, a property back in 2019 right before COVID is this a benefit I don't know is this a loss for me I don't know because guess what I didn't do it but it is on my list because I am able to move around the way I want to move around and enjoy my 20s in a different perspective because I didn't have a property to attend to. A lot of people don't realize having property or owning a property, it has its cost as well. And me being that I love a certain lifestyle, I love certain views and all of that. I did not in my 20s to stay in an apartment. People say, oh, apartment, you just throw money down a drain, blah, 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 to each their own. I feel like in certain phases in your life, it's okay. In this other phases, maybe it's not, but to each their own. There are people who have rented all their lives. There are people who have owned all their lives. And there are people who have dib and dab in both throughout their life. So there's no real definite 
right or wrong way to go about doing it. It all depends on your lifestyle. And for me, when I was in my 20s, my lifestyle was very mobile. And I love that for me. I definitely enjoyed the world because I did not get stuck into a mortgage payment, you know, since I was in my 20s. Whew. This one, I'm so glad. It's not on my doing. It's my doing plus it's God doing, but it's mainly God's doing because I know I have been reckless in my 20s. Not too many times, but quite a few times that this could have happened. And that is... I'm so glad I didn't have kids in my 20s. One, my mom had me when she was 18, and I had to raise my siblings ever since my brother was born when I was eight years old. So technically, I've been a mother-sister since I was eight, and me and my mother went and calculated it. That's 15 years of my life since I was eight to the time I left the house. And still to now, my mom still be calling me about my siblings and what they're doing. So I'm still kind of a mother, sister from afar. But I'm so glad and so grateful I did not have kids in my 20s because that freed up a lot of finances for me. For me to do literally whatever I wanted to do in my 20s, it did not hinder, not saying well up not saying if you have kids in your 20s you can't do whatever you want you can but at the same time resources are going to be a stretch especially if you are a single mother and or if you and your partner just don't have the finances to do life with a child i'm so glad financially it helped free me also mentally it helped free me because i know the mental capacity you have to have in order for you to raise a child is not easy. It's not easy. Trust me, as a sister mother, I understand. It is work. It is difficult. Um, to some, it is fulfilling. But even without the fulfilling part, just raising a kid from uh, in the womb till forever, to be honest, because... 18, 18 is not going to hit it. A lot of children, they stay with their parents or they rely on their parents even past 18, even past 30, even past 40. So it's a lot. It's a lot. And I know it's a lot. And I'm so grateful I was able to experience that with my siblings to the point where I don't feel the need to, well, I didn't feel the need to have kids in my 20s. I did not feel like I... I needed someone to love or to take care of or a little one to love me. I didn't feel like I I needed that in my life. In my 20s, I definitely enjoyed myself. I was very responsible and also I just made sure I experienced life the way my mother wasn't able to experience life and every time she talked to me about oh I wasn't able to do that when I was this age because I had you or I had the kids it literally solidified me even more when it comes to my choice of not having kids or not creating a child in my 20s so that definitely the experience of raising siblings my like my little ones that I love to the bottom of my heart like the only two things i didn't do is breastfed and gave birth to them other than that they're literally like my children so i have that to continuously go back because <laughs> it wasn't that long ago to go back in my head to be like oh you remember when you couldn't do this it's like yeah it's okay i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait or maybe not even have them at all but it's like i'm so glad in my 20s, uh -uh. I have friends who gave birth to kids in their 20s, and I'm not even going to lie. I don't envy their life at all. I love y'all, all my friends who have kids. I don't envy y'all life at all because I don't have to worry about, oh, me moving to another state, me moving to another country. I'm going to have to worry about child care. I'm going to ha have to worry about... Um, school zones. I'm gonna have to worry about predators for my kids. I'm gonna have to worry about like, oh, if I go to work, where they're gonna stay, who they with, like their mental development. I don't have sickness. I don't have to worry about any of that. I don't envy 
them at all. So, whew, that was long, but that's that actually should be at the top. I don't know if it's before doing drugs or after doing drugs, but it's one of the main two things I'm so, so glad I did not do in my 20s because... Honestly, I would not have this lifestyle that I have. I wouldn't have the mental clarity that I have now if I had to to raise a child when I was a child myself. Next, I'm glad I did not get a tattoo. I'm a big baby. I barely... The, the pierces I have, it took tears for me to get them, so... I definitely was not going to get a tattoo. I don't think I'm ever going to get a tattoo. One, because I cannot think of something I want on my body for me to look at every day. And two, what could that be that I'm endorsing that pain? That pain. Oh, no. So I'm so glad I did not get a tattoo. Also, <laughs> do you put a bumper sticker on the Lamborghini? So, so I love the clean look. I don't want any riding on me. I'm so glad I didn't fake my lifestyle. In my 20s, y'all know us millennials my age, we grew up knowing social media and not knowing social media. So, especially the era I started becoming an influencer, a content creator, um, the fake of the lifestyle was or faking, faking what you had, fake, yeah, faking the lifestyle on social was a big thing. I don't know if people are still doing that. It's kind of cringy if you are, like get a life. Either you show what your life truly is or you just don't at all, but pretending is just weird to me. But yeah, I'm so glad I didn't fake my life, my lifestyle. I'm a what you see is what you get type of girl. Um, yeah. It's very to the point. Like, there's no reason for me to fake anything. If I want y'all to see some things, I'll show it. If I don't, I don't show it. It's very simple. But for me to pretend I'm living away when I'm not or pretend that I have these type of friends or associated with these type of people when I really don't, it just doesn't make sense to me. Me, I'm the type of person, like, even if I am associated with certain type of people, y'all will not know unless, I don't know. But honestly, I keep my relations and relationships with people, like, genuine. You know, I don't need anybody for clout. I don't look for clout because a lot of the time, Fame doesn't equal money. I definitely respect people who are really about their bag off of social and not trying to pretend they are getting a bag on social. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between having social media as a business and knowing the business side of it and actually making money for social media and those who just go on social media to pretend that they're making money there is a total difference but uh, people are getting outed left and right about living a fake lifestyle which is cringy it's cringy especially if you are late 20s early 30s plus it's it's cringy just we're, we're all adults just live a normal life glitz and glam is not all of that if you're broke right so I'm so glad I was very genuine throughout my entire time on social. And I'm so glad I did not feel as though I needed to fake the funk. And that in return brings you more genuine people, to be honest. If you don't, if y'all haven't realized that. When you act fake, you get fake people. When you act real and legit, real and legit people attract gets attracted to you it's like real recognizes real i'm so glad i did not wait on a partner or a man to experience life i have some friends who who definitely will not go certain places 
or do certain things unless they have a man or partner to do it. One is is a romanticized of whatever the activity is or the place is. And two is because, you know, they don't like being alone. So I'm so glad I got up and went wherever I want, whenever I want, how often I want on my own time because I was able to. I was fortunately able to do it. And that alone just made me so much more of, an more of an independent person, more of a better person, a better thinker, because when you're on your own traveling or um, experiencing different things, you are able to rationalize even more on your own, you know? So I'm so glad I did not sit in the house and be like, oh, if I don't have a man to take me to Tulum, then I'm not going. Or if I don't have a man to buy me roses on Valentine's Day, then my life sucks. Absolutely not. I definitely experienced life way more than I could ever imagine because I did not wait on a man or a partner to experience life. I just got up and did it on my own. Of course, not saying that every single trip I went to was on my own of course not i have some girl trips i have some guy trips but overall majority of me living life was me deciding to do it on my own and not waiting for a partner to subsidize it financially to subsidize it emotionally physically any of that so i encourage every female to definitely explore the world on your own before you settle and try to take a partner with you because hmm i promise you it is it's so much sweeter so much sweeter doing whatever you want to do on your own terms thank me later I'm so glad I did not people please. I'm not a people pleaser, one. I'm just not. I'm very direct, very upfront. So if you don't like something I say, first of all, I don't try to say anything to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody for you know no reason. But at the same time, I'm going to be 100% real with you because I will want you to be 100% real with me, period. So I don't subscribe to people pleasing. I don't subscribe to telling people what they want to hear because I do not want the same for me. I don't want yes men in my circle, yes women in my circle. If I'm in a wrong, let me know I'm in a wrong. I will analyze what you say and adjust accordingly if needs be. And I expect vice versa. That's the only way we as human will be able to grow and evolve in proper relationships. So me, people pleasing will do absolutely nothing but ruin my confidence, ruin your confidence, and... Uh, disrupt the trust in the relationship so throughout my entire 20s i never felt as though i should be stepping around on eggshells around people or so i don't step on anyone's toes um i was definitely always respectful to people so if i didn't know you i would analyze to see how you are first in order for me to open my mouth and say something but at the same time like if you, we are friends true friends i'm not talking about just people strangers i meet on the street if we are true friends you will know me and i will know you more and we will click on the on the same platform to know that we are going to be real we are going to be trustworthy with one another and that's what relationships are built on that's what my relationships are built on i'm i'm gonna need you to tell me when i'm in the wrong we all have egos. We all have times where we don't want to listen to anybody. But I'm going to need you to be that friend to keep it 100% real with me because I will do the same for you. I don't want any of my friends or close family members to, to be steered the wrong way in life. So I feel as though well being trust, truthful and trustworthy as well, but mainly being truthful upfront is the best way to cut off a lot of BS.
in relationships. A lot of unnecessary fats. Last but not least, I'm so glad I did not do any cosmetic procedures in my 20s. And you guys know cosmetic procedures is so popular. People are getting fox eyes. People are getting baby Botox. People are getting lip injections, rhinoplasties. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, everything. Implants and, and takeouts and put-ins and lifts and tights and suctions. All of that people are getting. And I feel as though in your 20s, I... Look, I'm not against plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery. I'm not against it. Do as you feel, boo-boo. I am against it when people in their 20s are doing it because your body changes so much once you hit 30s, when you're in your late 20s, 30s, to the fact that what you wanted in your early 20s, mid-20s, may drastically be something different that you want in your next phase of life so i personally do not approve cosmetic surgery in the 20s because our minds are not fully developed to where we feel as though we are 100 percent confident with ourselves a lot of cosmetic procedures that are done in the 20s is because they want to fit in with the next person or want to fit in with whatever the media is presenting that being said, that means we are still impressionable. It's fine if you are impressionables in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You are a grown person. But when your mind have not quite developed properly in your 20s, plus you're impressionable, plus you don't have the right amount of funds to do it, so you are doing it in a cheap way, plus um, your body is not completely developed all the way yet, that's where it becomes very, very dangerous. And that's where we get a lot of females getting those regrets later on in life when they become more voluminous than they were in their early 20s. And now they have lumps and bumps everywhere that they don't want it to be because they had procedures done in their 20s. That's the only reason I say I'm so glad. I don't see me doing anything to my body in the foreseeable future because I'm very much confident with my weight. I'm very much confident with how everything sits as of right now. Um, and plus, like I said, I am a big baby when it comes to needles, knives, going under all of that. There's only one reason I will go under the knife for, and I will probably talk about that in another video. But other than that, it has nothing to do with a cosmetic or, oh, I don't like this about me, my future, my features, I don't like that about my body. It has nothing to do with that. So I don't approve 100% of Anybody in their 20s, I don't care if you're 29, wait until that 30th birthday, I don't care. I don't approve anybody in their 20s to get any cosmetic procedures done. Um, I'm not going to let down upon you because to each their own, but I see way more regrets when it comes to getting procedures done in their 20s um, later on in life. So like, what's the point? You might as well just wait. You might as well. There's no point for you to rush into something now just because you want it now, now, now. Um, your body is not going to stay that way. Either you're going to get smaller, either you're going to get bigger, either you're going to develop health issues that's going to hinder you from getting healthier or that's going to hurt whatever you had going on. You just don't know so i just feel as though just to wait a little bit there's there's patience or there's virtue in patience just wait a little bit and see how your butt your body turns out later on and then determine whether you want to nip tuck suck or anything just just wait just wait i'm gonna have to be completely honest when i was younger like in high school i wanted boob implants because my chest was just so small. I had a very athletic body. I was running track. I was doing cheerleading. I was always, y'all know track bots. We are very um, muscular, slim, 
and um, we normally don't have a big chest and that helps us run fast. So I wanted a bigger chest when I was little because I had more of a boxy athletic shape. But once the hips came, <laughs> the hips my mama had, once they came, and even now that I'm 30, now my breast is getting more plump. I'm so glad I did not get anything done not that i had the money or the resources or even the knowledge of how to do it but i'm so glad i did not let societal pressure of being in the itty bitty titty committee um pressure me into going under the knife at such a young age even in my 20s in college i'm so glad i just didn't get into it because who knows how my body would have developed over time and if i even would still want my implants you know and of course trends 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 is ever forever going so me back when i was in high school thinking maybe silicone implants would be best but now people are using fat like a well, trans fat transfer in order for them to do it so, and then I would have these big balloons on my chest with the silicones and then there's the possibility of having the the illness what's that illness called when the material silicone material starts bleeding into your body or your body rejecting it it's just so much that your body is going through between high school and your 20s hormones development, all of that. So the fact that, yeah, I, it's best to wait. I feel 100% it's best to wait after your 30s. And in that way, you're not wasting your money and having to go back all the time to redo because of trends or redo because you know, you had the thing in for 10 plus years. So just start off in your 30s if you want to do it. But I'm just so glad I didn't do any cosmetic procedures in my 20s.